Hello everyone, my name is Theo Young. I'm with Refine Inspection Services. We offer NDT training and consulting. Uh, today I wanted to discuss uh, how to repair an electromagnetic yoke. Oftentimes uh, technicians will be in the field and they will experience shorts in their cords. Um, these should always be sent off to um, a repair facility uh, approved by your company. Um, however, if you are the person that's designated um, to repair these, you need to know how, okay? Um, some, most of these are very simple, um, easy to do, quick things. Um, so today, this is exactly what we're gonna be looking at. So what I have is a um, an electro-spec yoke, and what occurred with it is it was having a short in the cord. So as you power it up, um, if you move maneuver a particular way, um, it would no longer uh, send the current to the actual legs. So we are going to look at how to fix that. Each yoke is different. Um, this particular one, it actually hooked up to the back. So there was a set of screws, right? And if you look inside, you'll see an additional set, okay? So this is where those cords actually hook up to. Okay, and we were actually having a, a issue right here. So went ahead and cut it off, okay? All we need to do is just simply um, find a good area of cord, recut it, okay? Um, and then we'll be adding new um, terminals. Right. We have our terminal kit here, okay? Shrink heat gun here as well. And then obviously our wire strippers, okay? as well as our crimp tools, okay? Again, so you'll cut back a good length, okay? You'll use your wire strippers. Um, these were actually a 12 gauge um, wire, so we went ahead and cut these, okay? Stripped them, and now we're gonna be adding our terminal. So as you can see, I went ahead and I've used my crimping tool and I've crimped the first one. Uh, we're going to continue crimping these um, with this tool, okay? So we use the number five and then the number one. Now you can use any crimp tool you want, right? You could even use the crimps up here. Just need to make sure that you're putting enough pressure um, so that these aren't easily uh, are able to come off. So I'll get them on and then we'll come back and take a look at it. After we get those crimped on, we're just going to go ahead and use the heat gun to uh, further seal that closer to that wire. Okay guys, so we connected back in our prongs, okay? You don't wanna over tighten these. Do a good hand grip, tighten, and then just come back with um, uh, an extension screwdriver. And again, you don't wanna over tighten, hand tights plenty, okay? And then all we're gonna do is place this back in. Um, you can use uh, various different types of sealant um, Because the only thing I have available is a hot glue gun. I'm just gonna put some hot glue around it This is just to keep this from getting dirty inside. Anyway, there's a whole other housing for all the other components inside So shouldn't be that big of an issue as you can see we got everything screwed back in the housing um, One of the things we're gonna work on right now at this point is going to be maintenance on the legs We're just going to take this uh, out, clean in between the slots, uh, grease them up, uh, that way the legs can articulate, okay? Um, usually what happens is people will switch between dry magnetic particle testing and wet magnetic particle testing, and the dry powder will actually get clammed up inside of these uh, grooves here. So we're gonna clean those up and get this thing working the way it should. So I'm using a solvent cleaner to clean in between uh, these grooves um, you can use acetone you can drop the legs in acetone um, or any type of cleaner solvent just make sure that you apply a little uh, grease you can use uh, wd-40 um, just trying to help articulate the legs okay and the main thing is make sure that you do not screw this in extremely tight when you reinstall so now that we got our legs articulating okay right the next thing we want to do is a 10 pound lift check. Here we have our 10 pound block. Um, normally your spacing would be identical to what you're going to um, 
be using for inspection, but we're gonna go maximum just because we um, repaired the cord and also fixed the legs, okay? So we're about seven, eight inches possibly. Again, um, all your NDE equipment should always go back to the manufacturer or an approved repair facility. However, if you're in a bind or you've been designated as your company to repair your equipment, um, this is exactly how you would do it. If you have any questions, please send me an email at theo.young at refineinspectionservices.com. Um, also, um, you can look us up on our website for any of our NDT training courses. You guys have a great one.